Rap futuristico Rap futuristico Rap futuristico Hello everybody, we're delighted to welcome Mr. Paolo Bandini to ForzaItalianFootball.com Paolo, it's been a while since we've last spoke to you, how are you doing? Very well, how are you? Yeah, not bad, I'm getting a bit nervous ahead of the Euros um, given that Italy's preparations haven't exactly been ideal Yeah, no, no, not, not at all, have they? I mean, it's, uh, it's one of those frustrating things where everyone outside starts to just uh, tell you that uh, Italy always do well off the back of a scandal, but it doesn't feel like uh, things are going perfectly at the moment, and uh, I think that scandal thing may have more to do with coincidence than it does to do with uh, the, the fact of the scandal. Yeah, well, I don't want to talk too much about the scandal, otherwise we'll all get depressed and then it's just going to spiral out of control. Um, but what do you think about this, just the squad and the players that Prandelli selected? I mean, like when it was announced, I thought I was reasonably happy with it. Maybe a couple of things I would change, but generally I was, uh, I thought he picked probably the best squad he could have. Yeah, well, I, mean, I think Prandelli's made good decisions most of the way through his, his time as manager. I, I, I like the, the, I don't know, it feels like an optimistic squad. It feels like yeah, he's putting faith in in not necessarily just the old guard. He's called up some, some players who weren't expected, certainly for the original 32. Um, I had a couple of reservations when I saw the initial squad. I think, uh, like a lot of people, I looked at it and said, OK, but who's your prima punta? Who's your, your real sort of leading the line front man there isn't a sort of big target man in there and, and that's still a concern for me and I'm, you know whether or not Cassano Baratelli works as a, as a partnership remains to be seen but I think given the, given the injuries and, and, and the unavailability of Crescito and, and, and the rest I think he's, he's picked as, as strong a squad as I think he could be. What do, what do you think about all the kind of like noises about the changes in tactics and personnel, in particular De Rossi playing at centre back. Because I mean, when I heard that, I was a bit kind of worried. That I, I didn't think it's really the time to be start starting to experiment with uh, different tactical plans and chucking midfielders in the centre of the defence. Yeah, I do think it's dangerous for Italy to be making this sort of changes close to the tournament, and and predominantly because. I really think when you look through qualifying, uh, the way Prandelli had made this team play, the, the whole um, ethos, I guess, behind this team was possession football, um, you know, prize, prize the ball and, and control the game and, and dictate it in that way. And the formation is one thing. You know, we can talk about four three one two, four four two, whatever. I mean, it really was a, you know, it was a four three one two for most of qualifying with a diamond midfield. But that was the ethos. That was the underlying theme was we're going to keep possession and we're going to build off of that. When you talk about going to a 3-5-2, it's not really a formation that lends itself to that at all. It's a formation that lends itself to counter-attacking football, to letting other teams come on to you and then catching them quickly with that ability to break that you get through having two wing-backs. And in a sense, I think it's a very very logical decision. I think it's a, a, ta- a formation that, that in lots of in lots of ways suits Italy. Obviously, as well as anything, you've got a lot of players in that squad who've played in three man de- in teams using three man defence this season in Serie A. So, and not least the Juventus, which obviously is such an important block of players for this team. So, on, on that front, it makes sense. But I'm not sure if it makes sense to change the whole ethos of a team this close to a tournament. And I think giving up that idea of possession of football and trying to play in a more counter attacking way, it's a dangerous thing to me. Paolo, do you, do you think that um, Andrea Barzagli will be a big miss to the Azzurri? Yeah, I do actually. I think he'll be a big, big miss for, for Italy and, and, and not least because you're talking about who we're going to bring in, in the middle to play in a 3-5-2. Now he's decided to go with a 3-5-2, it becomes a much bigger miss, obviously. And, and Barzagli's the, the guy who was going to sit right as the middle player in that three and, and now you're talking about bringing in a guy, uh, Daniele De Rossi, from midfield to, to fill that hole. Very different technical abilities in my opinion, very different style of player. Uh, De Rossi's been talking to the press this afternoon and said well, I see myself more as a, a, a regista than as a defender in this system and okay, you know, it, it, it's an interesting experiment and uh, I think it could work out very well De Rossi's a very talented player and had a couple of very good games at centre back for Roma this season. Also had a less good one during during the 4-0 defeat to Juventus the second time around but, but even then you're talking about him playing in a, in a very different uh, situation because that was a four-man defence rather than again a three-man defence with him describing his role in a bit of a different term. So I think it's it's a very important player Barzagli purely on his own merits. You could talk about the fact that he was part of that Juventus defence that conceded 
so few goals this season, kept 21 clean sheets. But I think perhaps it's a double whammy because you've got that and then you're also talking about, OK, and now we're experimenting with a player at centre-back who isn't really a natural centre-back and who is going to be a loss to our midfield by playing him at centre-back. So, yeah, it's a it's a, a big loss for Ricky, I think. And I think you can see how big a loss it is from the fact that they've tried to wait as long as they possibly can before actually dropping him from the squad because they know that he could still, even if only for the knockout stages, could still be a hugely valuable asset to him. And who would be? Who do you think is going to be the key player for Italy in the tournament? Obviously, you've got the likes of Cassano, Balotelli. If he decides, if the good side of him decides to turn up, uh, Andrea Pirlo is another obvious candidate. Who who do you think is going to be kind of the star man? Well, I've been asked this question a few times in the build of the tournament, and for me, it has to be Pirlo, just because look at how important he's been for Juventus this season, but also because when you when you go back to the last World Cup and you hear what Marcello Lippi had to say after going out so early and after disappointment, he always says that his number one regret was the fact that he didn't have Pietro. And that was the thing that he thought hurt his team most. And he was he was injured for the first two games, but he came back only for the second half of the final game. It was a case of too little, too late. And I think that when you look back to 2006, and obviously it's a lot of years ago now, but when you look back really to, to the good times for Italian football, in, in, in that whole period, really, this team has always been most successful when Andrea Perlo is central to it and, and able to be pulling the strings. And I think that's likely to be the case again here. I think he's had, he's coming off such a strong season for Juventus, where you know uh, most assists of anyone in the division this year. That he's clearly he's clearly absolutely integral. I think that the flip of that is it gets overstated. And I think he got overstated at Juventus because to to say that he'd been the, if he'd been everything about that team would have been would be completely false. It was a team built on on a team ethic first and foremost. There were players even alongside in midfield and Vidal and Marquisio who had fantastic seasons. But still, if you're going to ask me to point to one guy and say who's who's most important to this team, it, it's probably Pierre with maybe Buffon as a close second because he's having a fantastic season. I think that his ability to his ability to keep the team in games which they have no right to be in is is obviously a massive asset. Excellent. And uh, one last thing. Who are your tip for the tournament? Who do you think is going to win it? I think Germany is the team that I'm leaning towards. Uh, Spain makes sense in lots of ways. They're, they're a very strong team and we've, you know, they've still got the same core of players that have taken them to the last trial. So uh, there's lots of logical reasons why it should be them. But I think, first of all, there's a reason why no team has been able to win three, tour- three international tournaments like this in a row. And that's because it's very hard to do. Uh, more often than not, when you look back over history, it's not actually a favourite going into a tournament and actually into the, the big international tournaments that ends up winning it. And I just think that actually, even when we look at the last World Cup and everyone talks about how brilliant Spain were, we miss the fact that if you look closely at some of those games, they weren't soaring through every game. I remember even the game against Paraguay thinking, well, OK, Paraguay was a back to the wall effort, but it wouldn't have taken that many breaks for Paraguay even to win that game. So. I think it's uh, I think it's just going to be one of those situations where Spain to win these tournaments always require requires a little bit of luck, and I think Spain have had a lot of that. Uh, that's not to say I don't mean to construe this as Spain are a lucky team; they're not. They're an excellent team, but even the best teams need that bit of luck in these tournaments. And I think that uh, I think it's going to be someone else's turn to, to catch the important break when it when it's needed. Excellent stuff, uh, Paolo. Thank you very much, and uh, hopefully we'll maybe catch up with you during the tournament to get your thoughts on how things are going. Sure thing.